This is the Cessna Citation Sovereign Plus, a testament to engineering excellence in the medium-size business jet category. Boasting a range of 3,200 nautical miles and a maximum cruise speed of 458 knots, it's an aircraft that doesn't compromise on performance. Introduced in 2013 as an upgraded version of the original Citation Sovereign, which itself had been a significant player in the mid-size business jet market since its debut in 2004, the Sovereign Plus was born out of Cessna's desire to offer a more advanced, efficient, and versatile aircraft that could meet the ever-changing demands of modern air travel. It features new engines to provide greater thrust and fuel efficiency, the state-of-the-art Garmin G5000 touchscreen avionics system, and a more luxurious cabin interior. Stay with us till the end of the video because here is everything you need to know about the Cessna Citation Sovereign Plus. The cabin is designed to maximize passenger comfort with its generous dimensions and measures 5 feet 8 inches or 1.73 meters in height, 5 feet 6 inches or 1.68 meters in width, and 25 feet 3 inches or 7.7 meters in length. Five basic fabric and color combinations are available, but customers can also choose their own fabrics and colors. A unique feature is the central recess in the floor, allowing for more headroom and enabling passengers to stand at full height, even extending to the lavatory area. The standard cabin layout accommodates eight passengers in a double club configuration, consisting of two sets of four seats facing each other. A single side-facing seat opposite the aircraft entry door can be added, bringing passenger capacity to nine if you select the shorter refreshment center. The nine-seat layout is the most popular, as most operators use their sovereigns in roles akin to corporate shuttles. They skip the frills, load up the seats, and go. But it is the new air conditioning, seats, and cabin electronics that passengers will appreciate most. Cessna says the air conditioning provides 37% better cooling than that of the first-generation sovereign. The seats are ergonomically designed with integrated armrests, extra lumbar support and footrests, and offer forward and aft tracking, swivel bases, and reclining positions for maximum comfort. For those looking to catch some sleep, the seats can be transformed into four berths using air mattresses, providing a flat and even sleeping surface. The aircraft offers a range of amenities to enhance the in-flight experience. The lavatory is isolated and equipped with a wash basin, combined with a wardrobe for added convenience. The lavatory is separated from the main cabin by a solid wooden door, offering an extra layer of privacy. The cabin also features 14 electrically operated windows, allowing every seat to have a view out and filling the cabin with natural light. Passenger electronics have also made a quantum leap in this airplane thanks to the new Clarity cabin management system. Clarity integrates the cabin electrical system, avionics, and communications through a fiber optic backbone. Six 110-volt outlets are located throughout the cockpit, cabin, and lavatory, with jacks at each Club 4 seat grouping, and USB charging ports are standard at each seat. As an option, the outlets can be added at each seat. Interactive touchscreen controllers at every seat about the size of smartphones operate cabin lights, window shades, temperature, digital audio and video, and an interactive moving map. The controllers also have built-in web browsers. Options include RGB mood lighting, Wi-Fi, high-speed internet, and satellite radio. At the front of the cabin, there's a mahogany chest of drawers designed for storing tableware, dishes, snacks, and hot beverages. The galley is well-equipped, providing ample supply cabinets, cold storage, and a well-lit counter for food preparation. Stowage space remains respectable for an aircraft in this category. A heated, externally accessed baggage hold in the tail section can swallow 1,000 pounds or 455 kilograms. Inside the lavatory is a hanging closet rated for 312 pounds or 140 kilograms, and another smaller closet in the front opposite the galley can take 123 pounds or 56 kilograms. The cockpit achieves a look and feel in harmony with the cabin, but the big changes are the avionics, which are flanked by an all-black instrument panel instead of the previous gunmetal gray. Two G5000 touchscreen controllers replace the two Honeywell FMS multifunction control display units in the pedestal. 
The touchscreens with their digital icons make for a much more modern look compared with the MCDUs, which have their own displays as well as separate alphabetic and numeric keyboards, buttons, and knobs. The control columns now have black leather on the yoke grips. The glare shield covering is also new and should last much longer. Stainless steel accents are placed carefully throughout the cockpit. Each pilot has a cup holder on the outboard side, behind which is a recessed receptacle that is a perfect fit for a cell phone. The gust lock, which used to be on the bottom panel near the left seater's left knee, is mounted on the aft pedestal. The APU panel no longer exists, as that is controlled via the G5000 touchscreens, demonstrating a key advantage of the G5000 system. Much more control with fewer knobs and switches, and thus a cleaner, less cluttered cockpit. Heads-up technologies was also tapped to update the cockpit lighting. The floodlights are made with side-emitting LEDs and a special film, creating a soft, uniform glow over a large area, thereby reducing glare at night. The glare shield is fitted with LEDs molded into a urethane housing that conforms to the shape of the glare shield and aligns the LEDs to minimize stray light. One of the big changes that pilots will appreciate with the G5000 system is the rotary switch test. Instead of having to run through each test manually, the test is done automatically, speeding up the pre-flight process. Most cockpit switches are push buttons, making it harder to accidentally move a switch, something that is easy to do with toggles. Three-position switches like the generator switches remain toggle types, however. The fully automated pressurization system picks up the destination altitude from the flight plan. The G5000 system consists of three 14-inch displays in landscape orientation and four touchscreen controllers, two in the center pedestal and one forward of each pilot's side ledge. The big displays can operate as a PFD for each pilot with the MFD in the center or each can take over any task from a failed display. The displays also can be split into 60-40 screens with PFD-MFD information on one display, depending on pilot preference. Control of the MFD can be switched between either center touchscreen. Backup air data and attitude information is provided by an L3 Avionics GH3000 electronic standby instrument system mounted above the MFD. Garmin's synthetic vision technology is standard on the Sovereign's G5000 system and displays terrain features, obstacles, and traffic to help improve situational awareness. The G5000 system can be used to calculate weight and balance before takeoff. While the G5000 has few knobs and buttons, forcing the user to tap on the touchscreen for most functions, it does retain a rotary knob for pilots who are used to that interface. Frequencies are easy to change on the touchscreen controller, however. It's hard to imagine wanting to go back to using the knob. Changing a frequency is as simple as touching the standby frequency and then typing in the numbers after the one. Just type the number, then tap COM 1 or 2 and the frequency is ready to swap into the active window. The CNS bar, containing the audio and intercom controls, COM frequencies and transponder settings, always remains at the top of the touchscreen controller. All other functions are available from the home screen, which is always just one button away. Some other G5000 features include the ability to place a holding pattern anywhere, not just where they are published. This is something that isn't available on Garmin's G1000 system, although many pilots wish it were. The Garmin GWX-70 digital radar images can also be overlaid on the MFD maps, although not at the same time as Sirius XMWX images. Other cockpit amenities include dual cordless phone handsets hooked up to the Aircell GoGo Biz system. Texting is a function in the services section on the touchscreen controller. ADSB out-capable transponders are installed on the new Sovereign, and the G5000 is capable of data link communications. Now let's talk about the engine, performance specifications, and how it flies. The Sovereign Plus is powered by two Pratt and Whitney Canada PW 306D engines with a TBO of 6,000 hours, each producing 5,852 pounds of thrust. The aircraft requires 3,530 feet or 1,076 meters of runway to take off at sea level on a standard day. The engines allow a maximum rate of climb per minute of 4,083 feet or 1,250 meters, 
and a maximum cruising altitude of 47,000 feet or 14,326 meters. The plane has a maximum cruise speed of 458 knots, with an average hourly fuel burn of 250 gallons or 950 liters. The jet has a maximum range of 3,200 nautical miles, which is 3,700 miles or 5,900 kilometers, and a minimum landing distance of 2,600 feet or 792 meters, with a maximum net payload of 2,765 pounds or 1,255 kilograms, and a full fuel payload of 1,435 pounds or 651 kilograms. The base purchase price for a new Cessna Citation Sovereign Plus is $18 million before options, and the charter price is estimated at $5,000 to $8,000 per hour. Prices will naturally vary depending on availability, fuel prices, ground fees, and more. While the annual fixed cost is roughly $500,000 to $750,000, the average hourly operating cost is estimated at $2,500 to $4,000. Thank you for staying with us till the end. Here are two videos you can watch next. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.